Oh, wait. Wait, I hit the live thing and I didn't hit the, uh, the timer. <laughs> We're professionals. Hold on a second. What is up, you beautiful people? This is Gary Horton. This is this is the NWA, the show celebrating the past, present, future, history, legacy, and tradition of the greatest entity in pro wrestling hit history. And that is, of course, the National Wrestling Alliance. And with me, as always, we've got the lovely Will Martin. Hello, Will. Hello. Well, not as always, because I was on vacation last week, but I'm so good. I'm so happy to be back. And uh, tonight was another action-packed episode, and I can't wait to get into it. So glad to be back. Yeah, we're happy to have you back, man. I hope you had a wonderful vacation. Now now we're back to work. And a man who never <laughs> stops working, who who just who keeps going day and night, that's the, the incomparable Dr. Rob Stinson. I was looking for a good word there. I got it. That's good. Incomparable was a good word. But, but Will, wasn't it also it was an anniversary slash vacation, correct? Yep. It, well, our anniversary happened to fall on our family vacation, so uh, we got to have a nice, nice date time, you know, out at the beach, go to some nice restaurants and do some stuff. So it was it was a lovely time. Well, congratulations, man. Welcome back. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to be back. And what a night to show back up. The uh, Champion Series round number one is in the books. We know who's advancing to the finals. Two teams going to lock horns next week. We'll talk all about that, who they are. Uh, we'll also talk about, well, I'm sure we got a lot of things to talk about. NWA 73 coming up, Empower coming up. It's going to be huge, a big, big month for the NWA. We're walking into August and things are already getting nuts. And uh, just in case you don't know, we'd like to tell you that we are from a show called This Is Pro Wrestling. We have our own YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out before, it's over at youtube.com slash this is pro wrestling. We're also at TIPW show on all of the social medias. We'd be honored if you would uh go follow us over there and on the YouTube and check us out. Uh we appreciate everybody and uh we appreciate the NWA for letting us be here so we can hang out and talk to you guys about this latest episode of NWA Power. As you can see, uh I thought I thought it was an exciting episode. Doc is clearly still thinking the fix is in, and uh, it's the conspiracy theory, so we'll get more of his thoughts, I'm sure. But uh, we'll just jump right into this one. How about that? Uh, first up on the show tonight was Lady Frost taking on Kenzie Page. And uh, this was a good match. Two back and forth. These two ladies seemed evenly matched. They're two of the newer faces on the NWA this year. And uh, loved seeing them finally get a chance to go one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, unfortunately for Lady Frost, she's one of her aspects she's going to have to learn about is not getting overconfident. Because uh, in this case, she did seem to have the better of Kinsey. But unfortunately, after a big moonsault, instead of... Uh, Staying on her for the three count, she decided to pull her up and then argue back and forth with the ref, which let her walk back over to Kinsey and get immediately rolled up for the one, two, three, giving Team Camille and Team Idol another five points on the board in the champion series. So for those keeping track at this point, that would be Camille and Idol 10, Aaron and Taryn 5, Aldis and Melina 0, Pope and Velvet 10. Will. What do you think about Lady Frost versus Kenzie Page? Uh, it was an incredible match. I was excited about it as soon as I, I heard that it was on the card for tonight. Um, these are two, you know, uh, ladies who are making their presence felt in the NWA. I mean, Kenzie Page just last weekend had uh, a women's world title match. And, um, you know, here she is going against Lady Frost. And, and you're right. And I think the big thing to pay attention to here is, you know, Lady Frost is an intense athlete. She's an intense competitor, 
but I don't think she's accustomed to working on a team. And that's where the whole dynamic changes with this champion series is that you're part of a team and you've got other people looking after you've got other people counting on you. So the stakes are a little bit higher than just a one-on-one -on -one matchup where it's just your, your pride, your ego, your credibility. Lady Frost has to think about other people. And I think, you know, whether she learned a valuable lesson or not, uh, you're right. She had Kenzie Page beat a couple of times, in my opinion, during this match. And uh, just because she chose to, to keep going and she kept, you know, screaming to the official, you know, you'll you'll raise my hand when I'm ready. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen for her. And Kinsey Page squeaked out a victory. So, you know, kind of setting the stage here on this this uh, second part of, of round one of the champion series, reminding everybody, hey, this is a team event and your team's counting on you. And there was a lot of disappointed team members uh, walking out of the curtain after this match. Yeah. Um I mean, I, I, again, to your point, and I'm gonna—I'm not gonna speak right now about my feelings about the conspiracy series, but uh, just you know, laying all that aside, just from a str strategic standpoint, I was a little disappointed in uh, in Lady Frost, and, and I only say that because I believe Lady Frost and Kinsey Page are both two of the most highly regarded women's athletes in the world right now, and uh, and you're absolutely right, Will. Uh, this is not about any personal. I mean, obviously, you want to position yourself to be the one who might get the shot uh, if a legend were to defer it to you or something like that. But we've seen many athletes show a great deal of restraint and composure and laying personal animosities aside to to achieve the goal of putting the putting the team ahead. And and I think, Lynn, uh, you know, Lady Frost, knowing knowing the quality, she has to know the quality of athlete that Kenzie Page is. I mean, Kenzie Page is not a secret at this point. She, this is a woman who's – uh, who is a prodigy. Yes, she's young, but she's already made a, a splash on AEW. She's been uh, around the world. Uh, she's talked about by practically everyone who is interested in women's wrestling. And so for Lady Frost to to allow ego or maybe uh, confidence or overconfidence or maybe arrogance, I don't know, to get in the way here is a little, is a little disappointing. Uh, on any given day, Kenzie Page could walk out winning – under the best circumstances, under the worst circumstances, when uh, Lady Frost is not giving her her A game, there's no doubt Kenzie Page walks out with this with the win. Well said, Doc, uh, per usual. And so uh, here we go. We've got uh, points up on Idol Camille. It seems, I mean, this match is still pretty close in their round at this point since a win gets you uh gets you five points on on those uh one-on-one -on -one competitions so there's there's still room to grow uh the uh next up though is the match between mystery man versus crimson and you're looking at two teams where pope and velvet are well ahead uh here at this point uh again, over Aldis and melina uh this match was fantastic i thought uh between these two crimson a bit obsessed with the mask at first but as uh, Mystery Man fights back, you can see Crimson start to understand and react that he is in a fight. Uh, so these two are going to have to battle uh, back and forth the whole way. Crimson ends up going for a Death Valley driver. Mystery Man fights out of it uh, and ends up landing a nice looking power bomb on Crimson. Goes for the pin, of course, in that power bomb, but. Crimson kicks out, but Mystery Man able to immediately turn that in to a single leg Boston Crab, which was uh, pretty credible uh, technical wrestling skills there shown by the Mystery Man. And uh, he's got him locked in pretty tight, and it looks like Crimson might tap, and we get the bell, but it's not a submission. It's actually a time limit draw in this one. And so for the first time in the Champion Series, we get a draw which in this case, uh, if you're following along with the rules, nets each team plus two. And so now Melina and Aldis are on the board with two points. Pope and Velvet are up to 12. And that's how we're looking in the uh, champion series right now. Daka, just uh, since your boy Aldis's team is involved in this one, I'll let you go first on Mystery Man versus Crimson. You're muted, though. So you want to probably fix that. Well, well I was... I was clearing my throat. Now I'm on unmute. Don't correct me. Um, okay. <laughs> I wanted to point out how appropriate it was um, on, and I'm sure many people in our, in our chat and uh, people viewing who might not be active are aware of this, but we lost a legend today in Jody Hamilton, uh, one of the assassins mass wrestler. So it's, it was appropriate to have uh, a, a masked man compete 
um, in this in this particular episode. Again, I mean, it's just how this is when my Calvinism, my Presbyterian Presbyterianism comes in because obviously this this was not planned <laughs> to happen out that way. It just in in providence by uh, as things happen, we we had this match take place, which was a good match. It was a good match. I mean, this was uh, one if you, you're starting to get to see. A glimpse. We know the ability of Crimson. We know the fact that this is a guy who could easily slip into that world championship title picture. And we see basically uh, the mystery man take him to the limit. And um, for all what I've, you know, everything I've said about the mystery man and so forth, I've not yet one at one point or at any point criticized the man's ability. He's obviously got, um, you know, a lot of ability. It's not that, that, that disturbs me. It's the fact that he's uh, a, virtually a pawn in a larger picture uh, run by conspiracy Corgan and Irish Pat Kenny and Billy, the kid Trask and others uh, up there uh, that, that are trying to maneuver things to wrest this championship away from, from Nick Aldis. And so it, it's not, it's not anything personal. I, I just don't think that even, even the mystery man realizes, you know, he says he comes in and, uh He's not part of a conspiracy. He wants to spew any uh, conspiracy theories. And I, I can't remember who pointed it out a week or two ago that it's not a conspiracy if they're really coming at you. It just so happens to be that uh, the Mystery Man is one of the tools that uh, Conspiracy Corgan has uh, at his fingertips to distract, to obfuscate, and to otherwise obscure the world championship title picture. But all that aside, because I am told you I'd be good tonight, I'm not going to go into that. Um, so forget everything I just said. But... Uh, it was a it was a good match. It ended, I think, so far. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the only one of the first round matches that have ended in a draw. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, this is the only yeah. one. And so that that's going to play into the way uh, the teams uh, end up shaking out as far as moving on to the next round. So, and uh, I'm glad you brought up the assassin. Uh, well said on that, and, uh, and and I think Mystery Man actually even on Twitter. Uh, put out something about the assassin today and dedicated tonight to him. So uh, very cool to see. Well, that. That's great. And, and let's not, let's not forget. I mean, um, for those of you who go back and go on YouTube and watch some, some of uh, the footage of Jody Hamilton, the assassin, this is a guy who is a, a legend in the national wrestling Alliance. And I've seen people all day uh, tweet, uh, uh, you know, remembrances and, and condolences to his family, all the ranging from guys like the nature boy, Paul Lee, all the way to uh, Big LG Luke Gallows, who I actually got to spend some time with this weekend in Gatlinburg, believe it or not. Uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, Jody Hamilton has won National Wrestling Association or Alliance Championships in various different territories, from the Central States area to Florida to, uh, you know, Hollywood. Uh, the, the guy's a mainstay, I'm sure – I'm sure he's got a lengthy article on Wikipedia that, that references all that, but uh, it's a, you know, again, all personal feelings aside, and I, it's not really personal feelings that I have, but I have to acknowledge a touch of class when I see it and to see uh, mystery man acknowledge that is, is it's a nice touch. We're softening him little by little. Will nah. Um, the, uh, one of the things I loved will in this matchup is this is just two brute forces going at each other. And, uh, and then, I mean, I, I don't know, in the world today of professional wrestling where you see like so much over-the-top stuff, I mean, when Crimson delivered that slam, the ultimate pusher Tyreek in the chat here was bringing this up, just that slam onto the floor outside, that floor is solid. It is so hard, and there's like nothing to protect you there. That blew my mind uh, just uh, watching that in this matchup. But it did end in a draw, so I'm just curious, Will, your thoughts on this and uh, – how, how you look at Crimson and Mystery Man going from here? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, if it didn't end in a draw, it would be very, very hard not to call this the match of the night for me. It may still be the match of the night, even in a draw, because we had two uh, two guys. And listen, if you're going to go make a statement about your ability in the squared circle, doing it against Crimson like Mystery Man did tonight, is is a is one way to do it um so you know he's the mystery man for a reason we don't know who he is we don't know a whole lot about him other than he's here uh he wants to win gold and we've seen him in the ring a couple of times but i feel like tonight we we peeled back another layer so to speak of 
his ability, who he is. I mean, this is no slouch. I mean, Crimson's a big dude. They, they commented on it a lot from, from commentary, Joe Galley and Tim Storm did. I mean, Crimson is a big guy if you've never seen him in person. And and Mass Man uh, or Mystery Man, he stood toe to toe with him. And uh, he's, you know, if, if you don't know, uh, if you haven't seen him in person, Mystery Man's a pretty big guy himself. Um, you know, when he has the suit on and, and, and he's sitting down talking to Mae Valentine, you may not realize that, but he's a big dude. And I think tonight we learned that he's also a tough dude um, because this match was all over the place. These guys went at it. They went after each other. Um, and even in a time limit draw, I think, you know, it confirmed what we already knew about Crimson, that he's a tough dude. But it taught us something new about Mystery Man, and that is that he can go toe to toe with the best of the best in the NWA. So that's exciting for me. That's an exciting aspect of all this. Um, you know, it was a draw, so both teams benefited from it. Um, you know, I, I hate that it was a time limit draw. I would love to see a, a clear winner, and maybe we will down the road. Maybe these two guys will clash again. But um, but that's that's the rules and the nature of this tournament. You know, you can go to time limit draw and still get points for your team. Um, so, I mean, all in all, it was a fantastic match. I, I loved every minute of this match. Yeah, I, I thought it was a fantastic match, too, and I'm with you guys that it might be match of the night. It was a lot of fun, and uh, just, man, I don't know. It, it it was fun to see the transition for me of Crimson going for the mask and and like playing around there. Eric Dell in the chat pointing out there should be a fine for going for the mask. Um, but you know, in the middle of all that, then realizing, no, nah, wait a minute, I got to take this more seriously now. Like this guy's going at it with me here. <laughs> we got to get real. And uh, and then they couldn't take each other out and had to go to the time limit draw. So I got to see these two uh, one on one sometime down the road here. Um, so I'll, I'll add this too. I mean, this is just a, another little subtle point that, I, you know, may be lost on some people, but you've got mystery man who's on a team with Jax Dane and Jax Dane is at ringside cheering on mystery man against his, his war Kings, uh, tag team partner crimson. And there was several moments in this match. If, if you didn't catch it, go back and watch it, go back and watch this match just in general. Cause it's a great wrestling match. But, you know, when when he had him in that uh, single leg lock and, and, and Crimson's reaching for the ropes, Jack Stane is right there. And it was just one of those things and one of those elements to this tournament that adds so many twists and turns. And we'll get to more of that with with Slice Boogie and Jack Stane at the end of the night. But, you know, you've got tag team partners uh, going against each other. You've got managers going against the the talent that they manage. You've got all that in this champion series. And so, you know, what I love about every one of these matches is that they're so multifaceted. It's not just one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we talked about it with Lady Frost, and now we're talking about it here. It's not just, you know, two competitors going one-on-one. -on -one. There's so many different moving pieces to it. And if you blink, you might miss some of them. So go back and watch that if you didn't catch that uh, tonight, because there was some pretty, pretty tense moments during that match. Agreed. Um, so next up, we uh, well, Rob, you should at least be happy. I mean, Aldis and Molina are on the board here, so I just thought that was nice. I thought that would you'd get a kick out of that. Uh, Sal Renaro, Colby Carino, Jordan Clearwater, and Jeremiah Plunkett, uh, going in a four way match here, and it's an alternates match. Uh, I guess they just call it like an alternates four way match. And just for those of you who didn't catch it, uh, Doc did provide us with the rules here. Uh, a winner shall receive seven points for their team, and whoever takes the pinfall or submission will cost their team three points. So an interesting little twist thrown in here in the champion series uh, to give us an alternates match. And this one, by the way, a lot of fun with these four guys, and uh, you get to see what, what all they're made of. Uh, the big thing here is that Colby and Jeremiah Plunkett uh, decided to create a team together and it was working just fine except for the times like Colby Colby's a little sneaky he's a well you've seen it before Colby Colby's got an attitude problem and uh he's in here with Jeremiah Plunkett trying to take advantage Plunkett uh told him right at the beginning of the thing I'm not the one to mess with do not don't play with me and uh well that would pay off much later in the match as uh their teamwork started to fall apart when Sal and Jordan teamed up a little bit uh, and uh, then eventually you get down to uh, Colby trying to go for a pinfall and Jeremiah getting a little upset with him. Colby losing his temper and punching Jeremiah in the face, which led to more punches back and forth between the two. And Jeremiah, a little bit more clever here than the uh, young Colby Carino, goes for like a big punch, 
Colby ducks it, which drops him exactly where Jeremiah wanted him into position for a big DDT and the one, two, three, Jeremiah Plunkett picking up the win here. And Team Aldis and Molina now have seven more points on the board, taking them to nine. And this is exactly why Aldis and Molina would have picked Jeremiah Plunkett, those veteran instincts that he's been around the block. So, uh, Doc, I know he's your boy. I'll let you talk about this one first. Yeah, we're talking about the pride of Tater Pillar here, uh, Tennessee. Uh, Nick Aldis, as we all know, lives in Nashville. Um, he's got close connections to athletes like Tom Latimer, Camille and um, and Crimson, all of whom live, move, and breathe and train in Nashville. Um, he's no stranger to Jeremiah Plunkett. That's why he's on power in the first place. And again, I had him pick to win this uh, at the start. I liked seeing that little banter between Colby Carino and, and Jeremiah Plunkett at the beginning because that those are two of my favorites, and I love that intensity. And by the way, um, Gary and I got to spend some time with Colby Carino in Charlotte uh, just a couple weekends ago, and he is. That's pretty much like uh yeah he's got an attitude because he didn't give Gary the time of day <laughs> he he talked to me. Was it always about but, me? <laughs> well, I'm just saying like this guy don't want to be bothered. He he sees right through the you know all the 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 charade and the uh, and the uh, you know the, the the fake news and all that that Gary likes to to put out and that he likes to uh, propagate all the time. But uh, we did get to spend some time with him. And you got then you've got Jordan Clearwater, highly highly. Uh, you know, intriguing and, and exciting young talent that that's really already made some impressions among many people in the NWA. And then of course, one of the most likable talents, uh, Sal Renaro, who, who doesn't like Sal uh, in this match. And, uh, you know, uh, to me, it would have come down to, to probably Colby and Jeremiah, Jeremiah Plunkett. Then again, it could have, you, it could have come down to uh, Jordan Clearwater. And of course we've seen Sal Renaro have some good days. So really great. All, that's what I like about this. I mean, I don't like the conspiracy series, but what I do like is that we get to see these scenarios where these athletes are put in situations to compete against each other when we might not otherwise see that. And uh, uh, so it, it was neat. I'm not a fan of fatal four way matches. Um, you know, you throw the 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 point system in there, and you know, obviously, uh, in this case, it played out. It backfired on conspiracy Corgan and uh, the champ uh, due to his foresight and his. Uh, scouting ability was able to pick up some points here but you know it is what it is i like to see these four guys compete and if, it, if it's under these circumstances so be it yeah i agree with that and I, I think you know as as a huge fan of tag team wrestling my struggle with this match is i feel like 90 percent of it was was tag team wrestling i mean this match i mean you had some clear lines drawn between uh jeremiah plunkett colby carino uh, and Sauron and Orange Jordan Clearwater. So uh, there was some great teamwork here. Uh, and there was moments in this match where I had to remind myself, oh, this isn't a tag team match. These guys are, are going after each other. And, you know, you saw that when when Colby would try to sneak a pin attempt after after Plunkett would, um, you know, perform a move and uh, Plunkett would pull him off. He's like, nope, that's not we're not on the same team, you know, and had to had to kind of remind him. Um, but I mean, this all in all was a, a fantastic match. And I agree with your sentiment, Rob, that, you know, one of the benefits of this is just getting to see kind of some of these what you could call quote unquote random matches. But when you've got the the level of talent and the depth of talent that you have in the NWA right now, you can pick any four guys or any four ladies, put them in the ring together and you got a hell of a match, you know what I mean? And that's what we saw tonight. And so th this was, was no different. And, um, you know, it was, it was, you know, thrilling start to finish. And, um, you know, I, it, it sounds weird to say that it was surprising that Jeremiah Plunkett won. Cause it's not, cause this dude is accomplished. I mean, you, you, you've listed his accolades time and time again, doc. And, um, so, but I mean, when you're in a ring, like you said, with, with those other three guys, it can go any direction. And there were times where I was like, okay, this is Jordan Clearwater's match to lose. There was times I was like, this is Sal's match to lose after he hung around outside the ring for a while and then busted back in. And there was times when I was like, okay, Colby's got this, you know, he's going to outsmart everybody and, and, and squeak out a win. So super, super entertaining match, uh, start to finish. And I, I really love the, uh, the kind of layers of this tournament where you do have the alternates coming in and there is something at stake. Not only can you gain points, you can lose points. And I thought that was an added layer that, you know, you don't necessarily see that in the other one-on-one -on -one matchups. 
And um, so it almost gave it more gravity. I think they talked about it in, in commentary, but I thought that was really interesting. I, I was also thinking, I don't, have you guys thought of this? Like I'm thinking we, we've been at this series now for, if you count the, uh, you know, the show where the teams, the, you know, the, the draft show, the draft episode, we've been at this now for, you know, three or four weeks. Uh, we've been talking about it this entire season of power. And I'm wondering um, as, as these athletes compete in these, in these circumstances and, and they get put in these arrangements, I wonder if, agendas that they had carrying into the series will persist after the series ends because we're winding down now, or if new agenda will arise, if new animosities will, will develop and grow. I was just thinking about Colby Carino and, you know, his interactions with Sal Renaro, And I'm wondering if, I, I don't know. I, I it was just me thinking like, I was wondering like a lot of people had to set a lot of things aside, a lot of personal motives and personal ambitions aside to participate in this. When, when this is over, do those resume or have new animosities developed, have new ambitions developed as a result of this? So that, that'll be interesting to see what happens in the, in the you know, episodes of Power Beyond the, the Conspiracy series. That's well said because I, I, I definitely was with Will that a lot of the fun of this match was the times when the tag team stuff kicked in, uh, be it uh, – Kobe and Jeremiah dominating for quite a bit there, or just even when uh, Sal and Jordan Clearwater delivered that double bulldog with the high five in the middle of it, I was like, man, I could see either of these guys, uh, you know, these actually being teams and, and actually had the thought that if Colby Carino would, could temper that uh, anger just a bit, that uh, he could probably learn a thing or two with a Jeremiah Plunkett. And those two guys were pretty rugged and could, probably make a formidable team on the regular and go for the tag titles, even if they wanted to. Right. Right. I mean, uh, I, I'm convinced and I'm, I don't think this is a, a just a, a blind stretch. I, I think I'm, I can, I'm convinced that there are nefarious motives behind this entire arrangement, but I'm just wondering like, what are the second and third order consequences of this? Like what, what are the unknown knowns that emerge from this series? Because I guarantee you, Seeing, you know, and I, I don't want to jump ahead here, but just to, just to see like the interactions between Aaron Stevens and Austin Idol tonight, Austin Idol has been nothing but complimentary towards Aaron Stevens prior to this. And now we see Aaron Stevens drafting Tyrus into his team. And I, I know we're going to get into that uh, uh, some more, but like how do, these guys are, are world-class athletes and they are also very self-driven and they're also highly ambitious and they hold grudges. And so, uh, you know, I'm wondering how this reverberates. It's just a thought. I don't know. No, I, I think, I think you're dead on, man. It's, it's going to be interesting to see. And actually we're going to talk about Tyrus and Kratos here. Uh, so for those keeping track of the points at this point, uh, this did cost Pope and velvet sky three points uh, when Colby Carrito took that pinfall lost to Jeremiah Plunkett. And so now you've got Aldis and Molina, as as uh, President Corgan said in the matchup, uh, back from the grave. There they are, nine to nine, uh, right there with Pope and Velvet. And so anything could happen at this point in round number one. Next up, you had Kratos versus Tyrus. And one thing I thought of immediately here is you know, I, I don't expect that Kratos is a guy to form alliances unless there's money involved or, you know, it, it benefits him. It seems to be the relationship he has with Aaron Stevens. But putting Aaron Stevens aside, I loved how cohesive their team seems to be. Uh, Tyrus hanging out with JTG and Marche Rocket and Lady Frost. Like they all just kind of gathered together there in the huddle beforehand. And I don't know, they... You, you see the big monster side of Tyrus and the mean guy most of the time, but in this case, he seemed to, like he was, there was some respect given in between their, their crew. And so uh, just uh, very interesting to see. So again, another thing to think about, like does, do any of these relationships carry on beyond this point? Um, so here we go. Big hoss fight between these two. And uh, I mean, not much else to say, just like back and forth, just power versus power. And uh, it's everything you'd expect it to be. And uh, I would say that to this point, Tyrus had to be the most athletic he's had to be in a matchup thus far. He's been kind of just size wise, just dominant and just overpowering every single person he 
comes in contact with it can barely get him off his feet much less do anything to him on the ground but here kratos kratos took tyrus down several times and uh had the advantage and uh you know you could see that this could have gone either way unfortunately for kratos he uh did take the pinfall loss here after the big elbow uh in a confused moment i think even the the ref was caught up in the action and didn't know for sure what was happening and uh uh, but he gets the pin and Tyrus uh, adds five points to the board. And now Aaron and Taryn are caught back up with Camille and Idol. Block A and Block B are both tied up. Uh, that said, Will, what do you think of this matchup and where we're at so far? I thought it was a fantastic matchup. Uh, it's also worth noting uh, Austin Idol on commentary was fantastic. And and I'm starting to to suspect that Rob maybe attended the Universal uh, Wrestling College to learn how to how to ride both sides of a fence because Austin Idol, <laughs> he was, uh, you know, he was he was speaking out of both sides of his mouth in this match. And understandably so I get it. You know, he's, hasn't been happy from, from the beginning with, with uh, Tyrus not being a part of his team. Um, but, you know, so he was in a little bit of a predicament, but if you know, Austin Idol and you've <laughs> experienced him the way we have, uh, it, you know, that he's going to make a win no matter what happens. And so uh, it was entertaining to say the least, but I mean, this, this was definitely a hoss fight. If you're a fan of heavyweight prize fighting, regardless of where, wh what your preferences are or what your opinions are of these two competitors, you got to like this match. I mean, when these guys are going forehead to forehead grunting at each other, that's heavyweight prize fighting at, at its core. I mean, these, these are two monsters going at it. Um, and, and I think you're right, Gary. I think Tyrus uh, going against Kratos um, was forced to step it up a little bit in this match. And I think he's, you know, he's been used to, uh, you know, I think recently he's gone against Jordan Clearwater and, and Black G's and in a match that didn't happen where all he had to do was walk in and stand on him and get a pinfall. So, uh, you know, this match, he had to come out a little different and he had to, um, to really step it up and he came out with the win. That's respectable. Um, but yeah, Austin Idol kind of stole the show for me in this match and, and just the way he was, uh, spinning everything, but all in all super entertaining match, a lot at stake here, um, and did a lot for, for Pope and Velvet Sky and their team. What do you think doc of, uh, Kratos versus Ty Terrace Terrace? I'm sorry. Kratos versus Terrace. <laughs> I I would uh, I would be honored to attend the Universal uh, Wrestling College or I can't remember what it's called. It's, but, but and and I take issue at your point, Will, that that uh, Austin Idol is talking out of both sides of his mouth, and that that is something I do. I think Austin Idol has been scrupulously consistent throughout the whole thing. You got to realize what what it's Austin Idol that is consistent. What is inconsistent? is this debacle, this ridiculous manipulation of this of the one true sport that the conspiracy series is. And so that, that's where the inconsistency comes. And you put people in positions to, and we'll get more into this when we get to, to the final match, but when you put people in positions to, 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 to manipulate them, force them, as it were, to work against their ambitions, to work against their plans, to work against their better instincts, obviously – people are going to be put in positions where they have to say things that might sound contradictory, but in reality are their attempt to, to draw some sort of consistency out of utter chaos. And we saw that. We saw that in the, the mystery man match with uh, crimson, even Joe Galley was confused about uh, who was on whose team and this and that we saw that play out. So, you know, th this is don't, don't put this on Austin idol. Austin idol is a saint. He's an icon. And the man, the, don't I mean tell him you'll get a chance to tell him you'll get a chance to tell him I guarantee you won't tell him that because he's been utterly consistent I I meant it as a compliment you know the guy's skilled in it in a way that that none of us are but the, definitely you know the regardless of the outcome of that match my favorite part was Austin Idol screaming I won at the end I mean that was that was classic so well, he was uh, he was in a situation, like he said, where it was technically impossible for him to lose. So, uh, you know, if uh, Tyrus's team comes out on top, then he's on top still. And, uh, you know, otherwise he's also on top still. So, I mean, I, I will give Doc this. You're talking about a, a manager here now, former professional wrestler and now a uh, headlining manager who was there the day 
in the corner of Nick Aldis the day he first touched the 10 pounds of gold. So uh, can't take anything away from Austin Idol in, in that regard, I don't think. Right. And 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 you see his look, he Austin Idol laid everything out there. When when Aaron Stevens came out there, Austin Idol addressed him in the plain light of day for the whole world to see and hear, hey, they're back there shuffling the cards. You, you know, are someone that I've respected and that I've uh, and that I've always supported, and yet you put me in a position to to pick someone that that I manage. I mean Austin Idol's put in a weird situation here among other people, and we'll get to that with the next match, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, so jumping into the next match. Well, well, I guess the important thing to talk about here is that with the results of this matchup, you had Camille and Idol at 10 and 10 with Aaron and Taryn. Uh, Aldis and Melita and Pope and Velvet both tied at 9. Of course, this leads to there is no other round one match for Camille and Idol and Aaron and Taryn, so there had to be a tie breaker, and in this case, that resulted in the uh, time stipulation being brought in. If you don't recall, basically the tie break would be whichever team completed their victories in the quickest amount of time. And so in this case, about 12 minutes to 15 minutes, I believe was what a uh, galley had, had uh, announced Camille and idol win, and they will advance to the finals of the champions series. So team Camille and team Austin idol. So there you go. Um, yeah. Austin idol, his, his guy still looked good and Austin idols still in the finals. So his, his team proceeds. Um, yeah. So anyway, the uh, next match on the card was slice boogie versus Jack's Dane. And I've been saying this, I feel like every match tonight, but maybe this was my favorite match of the night. <laughs> this one had been announced. They wanted a winner out of this one. No time limit between slice boogie and Jack's Dane. Must have a winner, and uh, this one basically another hoss fight between these two. And and I gotta say, personal opinion, this is the first time since NWA Power started where I feel like Jack Stain really, really showed why he is a former world's heavyweight champion. This guy was on fire in this match, and Slice Boogie is good, don't get me wrong. Slice Boogie is an Excellent competitor. He's still young and got a long way to go, but he just did not have it for Jack Stain. He could not put Jack Stain down. Big splash. That that splash from Jack Stain is just ridiculous. Uh, ends up going for Slice, and Slice moves out of the way in the corner, and Jack hits himself on the post, and I thought that might be it, but maybe Slice wasting a little bit too much time. Goes for a pile driver. Jack's able to reverse that, flip him back over, and just anyway, the biggest clothesline we have seen in NWA power history uh, running towards each other, Jack Stade just takes Slice Boogie's head right off his body and ends up with the one, two, three. So, so much dead weight that it took Jack's, big tough Jack's, a minute to even turn him over to get the pinfall. But Jack's was, Jack's was. Uh, or I'm sorry, Slice was done at that point. He was out cold. He has no idea. I think that he still right now may not know exactly what happened in this matchup. Uh, Will, what do you think about this match? It was a great match. It was a great way to to uh, end power tonight. And I think that, you know, uh, he put these two guys together and taking nothing away from from Slice Boogie other than, you know, his his New York Mets attire that, that we constantly lament about as Braves fans. But you know, you're going. I mean, you're hard pressed going against somebody the the size, the experience, the the power of Jack Stain. Um, he's got the reputation he's got for a reason. And despite you know whether or not these guys are friends or not, uh, or what's going on behind the scenes with them, uh, this is a match for points. And these are two guys. Um, you know, Jack Stain's a, a former world heavyweight champion. He knows what it's like to be at the mountaintop. Um, and I'm sure no doubt every time that he steps in an NWA ring, he's got that on his mind. And so this champions series is, is a way for him to get back there. Um, so these guys are, are laser focused on that. And so they're putting personal relationships aside and Jack Stane just came out like a man possessed tonight. And that was just far too much for slice boogie to overcome. Doc, I don't know about you, but I was kind of thinking, 
how is this relationship going to play in with these two guys that like slice and jacks have been uh building a friendship and obviously crimson's over there on slice's team and uh it's just kind of weird but uh that seemed to not play into this even a little these guys knew what they were doing when they stepped in the ring I, I, all i could think about and this is where my i suppose my my intellect comes into play here you might call it my nerdiness i call it my intellect as I was watching this match tonight, no joke, and you can ask the lovely Tanya Stinson. Um, I was like, you know, this reminds me of like World War One, when all the princes of Europe, all the kings are ma manipulating a continent like play toys. And when I think of this ridiculous series, the conspiracy series, that's what I saw play out in this match. This was, you know, this this was a mathematical equation. Obviously, Slice Boogie is a, a phenomenal competitor, but we what we have here is a a mentor, not so much a friendship, but a mentor teacher relationship. We've seen this play out uh, in the last uh, few weeks of, uh, of power that Jack Stane, former NWA world's heavyweight champion. He knows what greatness is. He knows what a spark looks like when he sees it. He sees something in, in um, slice boogie and it's, it's some, and he's put enough emphasis on this that it has really ruptured and damaged a very deep historic very personal relationship between he and Crimson. And this is what upsets me so much about this is that this is where the manipulation of the, the toy playing comes with, with conspiracy Corgan, putting people, athletes, professional athletes, human beings, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a tender person, guys, you know me, I'm fair play by the book every time, you know, I, I want to see the, I, I hope the best for people. And to see, um, to see Jack Stane and, Slice Boogie under this weird construct being forced to to face off against each other and Jack Stane being put in a position to potentially hurt someone that he obviously cares about, at least from a mentee mentor standpoint. I think it's really it just shows the the depth of cruelty that that President Conspiracy Corgan has. And 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 uh it really kind of bums me out that we ended on that note because you're right. I've seen in the last year, I've, I don't know when I've seen a serious clothesline like that. I mean, again, we we talked to Slice Boogie after that happened. He was not coherent. He was, uh, you know, you can't, you got to think that this is going to have implications on that relationship. Very promising relationship, by the way. Uh, but it's been since I saw the ultimate pusher Tyreek tackle a fan trying to break into power tapings. Clothesline the man, nearly took that guy's head off. That's the last time I've seen something like that, but this was on a another level. And it just, you know, that just speaks to the, again, we talk about second and third order consequences, the kind of damage that can occur when you manipulate and you play with things as though they're chess pieces or toys, just like the princes of Europe in World War One. Right. That's a great analogy. I, I love that. And yeah, uh, RIP that fan that Tyreek had to take out. That was just, the thing with Tyreek is, is he's, He's not like a six foot dude. So he had to like go up to get that guy. So there was like a bounce in it. He just like shot off like a rocket right at this dude. Head gone. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know which is more deadly, that or Jack Stane, who's just still got his base and those legs planted and just whoom. Anyway, I hope, I hope we see Slice Boogie again soon. He, when he wakes up, uh, let him know he's, he's still welcome to the NWA. Um, all right. So with that, that wraps up round one of the champion series. And here we go. Uh, because of the time uh, situation, like we said, the tiebreaker, Camille and Austin Idol sit on top of bracket A. And in bracket B, with the win for Pope and Velvet Sky from Jack's Dade, they go, uh, Pope and Velvet's team gets 14 points in total, uh, taking over Aldis and Melina. And that is that. We move on to the final round which is going to end up being uh, Pope and Velvet Sky's team versus Camille and Austin Idol. So uh, looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Doc, you had something to say there? No, no. I mean, just yeah. obviously, there you go. The fix is in. Thankfully, mm -hmm. thankfully, we still have representatives of Strictly Business still uh, in this advancing to the finals. But, you know, it played out. It, it, people talk about speaking strength to power, but ultimately – you know, when you've got the resources and you've got the ability to manip manipulate, this this was this was set up from the beginning. 
Uh, and now uh, uh, Team Aldous and Team Melina have been eliminated, which is a, a shame, a crying shame in today's yeah. climate. Uh, the best way I have to look at this, and I just thought this might be a little fun, is to go back to the original uh, draft picks here. And uh, if you take a look there on the two end caps there, you've got the teams that are going to be facing off in the final. So uh, Camille and Austin Idol, if you don't remember, have Tom Latimer, Kenzie Page, Kratos, Mims, and Sal Renaro, Pope and Velvet Sky, consisting of Trevor Murdoch, Genocide, Jack Stane, the Mystery Man, and Colby Carino. So there's some obvious rivalries there, like Colby and Sal. They've had issues since the since the get. But uh, just curious, so you guys looking at these uh, two lists here, people in the chat, like what what are the matchups you want to see? Obviously, we'll have Genocide and Kenzie Page. That's the matchup there between the women. But what what other ones uh, would you if you were having to play out this chessboard, where, where do you go? I would, let me, let me say, before we do that, let me say, uh, and we normally wait to do this, but I, I have to, and I, first of all, Nathan, thank you for, for watching and being involved in this. And, uh, but your comment, I see your comment there, you know, that proves my point though. It's, that's not a counter argument. Had, had all this is team one and been in a position to face um, strictly business Yes, I would complain about that as well because this is a situation where the champ has been deliberately and uh, you know meticulously placed between a rock and a hard place. So yes, you're right. I would have disputed that as well or would have taken issue with that, but that's my point. The outcomes, there's only one outcome that could favor the champ and that's him winning and uh, and in this case with the way first round draft picks win and the whole the whole notion of the draft pick i think was was meant to set him up for failure and so i don't disagree with your point but you have to see what i'm saying the point of this is hashtag the fix is in had it not gone this way yes the fix would still be in the fix would be in until the very end uh but you know as it as it as it happens it played out nick Aldis still Still champion. He's been champion now for what a thousand and eighteen days. Um, <laughs> that doesn't happen all the time if you're not great. Okay, so I, I don't don't get me wrong. I'm not afraid that like this is not going to turn out and and Nick Aldis won't emerge from this. He's met bigger obstacles and bigger threats to him before. Uh, I'm just saying that that's what this is. And and when you make a comment like that, you're just proving my point that any situation plays out to the d disadvantage. Uh, the real world champion, the greatest world champion of the modern era, the national treasure, Nick Aldis, and Strictly Business, one of the most uh, profitable professional wrestling entities in the history of the one true sport. That's my point. Well, that said, yeah, I mean, looking at this, I mean, the thing to keep in mind when you when you look at these matchups is that any one of these teams, you can look right there and see them. So one set of these people are going to be given a title shot. Uh, at someone at some point, just whenever they choose to use it. So that's going to be the same for uh, the champions. Um, in this case, uh, Camille is obviously going to choose immunity, I suppose. Uh, and Pope being the TV champion right now, he, you know, he, he might want to go ahead and he's got, he's got two paths to the 10 pounds of gold. If he wants them right now, he gets one more victory in that uh, lucky seven or his team wins here. Pope can win, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't assume, should get a shot at the 10 pounds of gold. So very exciting. Obviously, Trevor Murdoch's going to have that in mind. You know how much he wants one more chance with Nick Aldis. Jack's Dane back in position to get a, possibly get in the title picture again. And the new mystery man, just like that, snap of the finger, mystery man could be in there. And Colby Carino getting everything he ever wanted. Just immediately. But what about Sal Renaro or the rookie, the big strong Mims, Kratos, more opportunities for gold. And then, of course, Tom Latimer could uh, challenge Nick Aldis for the 10 pounds of gold if they win. So anyway, going back to the initial question, I'm sure uh, that, that you've got matchups you'd like to see. Uh, Will, do you have somebody that stands out here or something that you're you're hoping to you get your eyes on? I mean, <laughs> any of them, <laughs> honestly. I mean, you, you said it best when you put the slide up to begin with. I mean, you know, pick pick any two people. The obvious, you know, Kenzie Page and Genocide that we're we're gonna see. But 
I mean, you know, pick any two of the rest of them. And, you know, obviously there's history with, with Sal and Colby, uh, you know, Tom Latimer, Jax Dane, that would be a, an incredible matchup. Uh, Tom and Trevor. I mean, there's definitely some feelings there. So, I mean, there's a number of different ways you can go with this. All of them, again, are, are interesting to me as an NWA fan, as a professional wrestling fan. And um, that's to, you know, to me, that's the point of this tournament. It's, it's it's been interesting from start to finish. We're heading and in, cruising into the finish line now, and um, I think it's shaped up to to be a, a pretty enjoyable tournament. Yeah, Doc. Uh, any anything there you, you want to see? I'm seeing I'm seeing stuff thrown up in the chat there. Uh, <laughs> James Lawrence saying Jack Stain versus Latimer. Uh, Roy Cap saying Latimer versus Mystery Man. Uh, people want to see Tom Latimer versus a lot of people. I think that's the key here. <laughs> Tom Latimer is always, it's always like Tom yeah, Latimer yeah. versus who? <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, Daco, who stands out for you? Man, uh, uh, Will mentioned genocide versus Kinsey Page. Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing genocide versus Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to see this this woman is powerful she's she is a force and i think man i think she'll hold her own you know but but anyway obviously we're gonna see genocide kinsey page that's gonna be fantastic really honestly the the, the matchups that intrigue me and, and i'm not joking here i you know we saw mr man versus crimson this is crimson is a person that's very close to uh the real world's champion he's not a member of strictly business but the the, the guys know each other and he's they obviously learn and study from each other. Who's the next closest analogy on that list? It's Tom Latimer. I want to see what Mystery Man can do against a member of Strictly Business, someone who, uh, again, has trained, worked with, studied, and learned alongside Crimson. The two are very similar. We saw Mystery Man and Crimson go to the time limit. I'd like to see if Mystery Man can take Tom Latimer down or if this uh, ends in a draw. I want to see how evenly matched Mystery Man against, is against this top-level competition. Then, uh, you know, uh, Sal Renaro and Colby Carino, that's an obvious pick for me because um, because of the, the blood feud that's going on there. Um, Mim, uh, excuse me, uh, um, uh, Kratos and Trevor Murdoch, um, two big guys, and then Mims and Jack Stane, two big guys. And, and the reason I say Jack Stane and Mims is because that matchup reminds me a little bit of sort of the relationship between Jack Stain and Slice Boogie. Mims is a younger guy in the NWA. He's no stranger to the sport, but he's someone who is uh, an open book, you know, or not an open book, but he's, he's, he's just taking in knowledge and learning. Jack Stain obviously has a heart to teach. So th that might be an interesting matchup. And then, of course, Kratos and Trevor Murdoch, uh, a world champion versus someone who will never be a world champion. Um, so that that would that that'd be interesting for me. Uh, well, okay. Um, I'm gonna throw this out there. I'm with you on uh, Jack State and Mims. I think that seems like a fantastic matchup. I'd love to see what those two hosses do to each other. Um, but I, I've got to go back to I think it was around season one or season two of NWA Power when I saw Trevor Murdoch and uh, he took on Tom Latimer and. It was uh no, it was in the TV. I think qualifier for the TV title tournament is what it was. And man, those two guys, I was there front and center for that matchup, and you felt every punch. Those two guys kicked the hell out of each other. So I kind of selfishly want that match again. I want to see Tom Latimer and Trevor Murdoch when they would throw each other into the turnbuckle. Like I swear to you, the ring moved. Like it was just, it was epic it was like just i don't know it was like superman versus uh doomsday or whatever like the big fight and just like with the put they punch each other the window shatter it just felt like that and uh anyway so selfishly i would love to see uh trevor murdoch take on tom latimer one more time also fitting that if if that were to happen and that just submits Trevor Murdoch's uh, path to the 10 pounds of gold and one more shot at Nick Aldis. That would be kind of fun if he, uh, you know, if he had to take down strictly business to do it. It, it play into the, it play into the freaking master plan. Wouldn't it? <laughs> oh man. I don't know. Uh, Nathan in the chat asking doc, he has a question for you. Now that Aldis is out, could we see him slide over to help out Camille? So the obvious thing is, is that Camille and Tom are both over there. So Strictly Business is on Team Camille. Um, 
But, I mean, I don't know. It's weird for the champ, right? Anybody he helps out here immediately also potentially could come for him right afterwards. Okay, so so let's let's understand this. It's not it's not the coming for you that's the problem. Everybody is coming for the champion. Everyone's coming after him. If hypothetically speaking, God help me, if, if something were to happen and Nick Aldis were to be challenged by Tom Latimer or Chris Adonis and he would lose the championship under gentlemen's rules in the square circle, Nick Aldis would be the first to congratulate that opponent and I would be number two behind them. It's not about that. It's about protecting the prestige and honor of the natural pecking order that develops in the sport of pro wrestling. And this ain't it. Is Nick Aldis helping Camille? And I guarantee you, he's already helping them. He's already advising them. These are guys that are close. There's no daylight between them. Okay. So if it were to happen in this play out, you know, things will fall where they fall. The problem that I have is not with the potential that Nick Aldis is going to have to face somebody. My whole argument for this entire last 1,018 days is that Nick Aldis has been the greatest fighting champion of the modern era. That's my point, And that is the champion's point. He ain't ducking anybody. We seen it. We were in Charlotte. We saw that match. Anything creepy or weird go on in that match, Gary? I know you don't want to say it, but anything like sneaky go on in that match? No, there was nothing sneaky. Okay, that, but that's all. That's all. That, stop right there. No. Nick Aldis will take on any appropriately duly constituted challenger that he has to. My problem is you do not generate a duly constituted challenger in this debacle. That's my point. It's always been my point. If he's a fighting champion, I don't see why he has a problem with anybody coming for the title. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him. It, His job's there uh, to propositionally, be there and defend it. Propositionally, Gary, and, you, and it's like, oh, man, how many times have we sat here and talked with the champ and he's had to tell you this over and over again because you just don't want to hear what he's got to say. You and 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 Jerry Mander, Joe Galley already have your little talking points. I saw you at the tapings. I saw you over there in the corner with Irish Pat Kenny and Conspiracy Corgan. I saw you over there talking. You may be part of the whole plan, dude. The point is, it's there is a pecking order that is established through hard work, through working yourself up in the ranks in the one true sport, and especially in the National Wrestling Alliance. That's how it's done. It's not done in a 14-man battle royal, and it's not done in a conspiracy series. You probably you love the think, designated hitter. You probably love the DH rule. I'm just saying, you don't think these guys are working right now in this champion series? These guys are working to get their points. They're earning those points. They're moving up the rankings. That's how you do it. I mean, that's I, the same thing. No, it's, no, it's, no, no. The, this is not the – you're no, not listening to me, Gary. Every and I'm single not gonna... time, there's some excuse for you guys. There's some reason why this thing isn't fair. And it's only it's fair not an if excuse I if it's a legitimate – if, if I'm the one who made the rules for this contest, then it's fair. But otherwise, everybody's out to get me. That's that's how it is. Okay, well, whatever. Just throw out a hundred plus years of 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 pure wrestling history, a hundred a hundred plus years of pro of prize fight history in the way that championships and contenders and the pecking order is set. Throw that all out. That's fine. You're you're right, Gary. You're right. None of that matters. Let's just a come up with a weird doesn't a weird gimmick, a weird gimmick that's cute and it's me like a prince of Europe and World One playing with my toys. You know, and and me having a personal axe to grind against the man who represents the company better than anyone has in the modern era. That's all. Yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah, I'm wrong. You and Will and the whole chat and half of the you know, I again, I I I, I don't mind straight uh, talking strength to power, bro. I got my money, man. You know, I got my money. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. I may not be on here next week. You know what? I may go work for Strictly Business because they're the only ones who give me an opportunity to speak freely and to speak about the rules objectively without being cut off and being undermined and having to listen to this, this unrelenting barrage of subterfuge and fake news. Week after week. Well, this is why some people need to use glue sticks instead of chapsticks.
This is because we, so much of our time is wasted arguing with this guy. I, I'm just saying, I feel like the champion series is more than fair and the champ shouldn't have a problem with it. I'm having fun with it. All right. <laughs> That's my two cents. <laughs> well, I think the chat's having fun with it too. And so we'll just clip out the part where Doc said everybody's right except him. And then we'll just uh, we'll just have that as a sound bite to play <laughs> when uh when we need it. Um yeah, and uh so let's talk briefly about uh with the little bit of time we got left and not much, but uh are you going to NWA 73? Are you going to Empower? Are you in or around near St. Louis? Are you within like 500 miles of St. Louis, Missouri? Because you should be there. I think NWA 73, we're down to like a couple of tickets. So yeah. if you're not, if you, haven't, yeah, if you haven't already bought your tickets there, you're, you may have missed out this time around for 73. But Wrestling at the Chase is still on. You can go and participate in the NWA Power tapings, and, of course, the first NWA all-women's pay-per-view on August the 28th is in power, and there is, I word is on the street in my little headsets here that you're going to start this week hearing a lot of names being announced for that show, so it's going to get exciting. In power is about to start picking up, so get your tickets while you still can because I promise you, History will be made at the Chase Ballroom August 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st. We already have an idea. We're down to the finals. Any one of those men in those teams could be challenging Nick Aldis for the 10 pounds of gold. That's a real possibility there at NWA 73. And uh, who knows? I mean, we're, we're going to see. We had it announced. Uh, legit Layla Hirsch is taking on the bunny on AEW this week, and uh, the winner of that match is going to be facing Camille at Empower for the Women's Championship for the Burke, the Burke on the line, and there's an Invitational where at least I think like 10 women are going to be participating, and don't quote me on the number, but it's something like that. These women are going to be facing off, and whoever comes out on top in the Invitational will get a shot at whoever the champion is at NWA 73. So that match is going to be happening. NWA 73, Mickey James won't be in empower, at Empower in action. She's going to be running the show with Gail Kim, but uh, Mickey James will be competing in a yet unnamed cha- with a yet unnamed challenger at NWA 73. It's, uh, it's exciting times, man. There's so much going to be going on. There's a lot to look forward to. I am super, super excited to be a part of that. We three will most certainly be there by hook or by crook. If we got to hide in a suitcase, we will get in to <laughs> these events. I promise you. We'll see you there. Doc, Will, did you have anything you wanted to add about these uh, wrestling at the chase or anything? Uh, I'll, I'll just add, Nathan said it in the chat. You know, he's got his seat and it's his couch. Perfectly valid. And we know a lot of people can't make it out to St. Louis uh, for whatever reason. Hop on the Fight TV, order the pay-per-view. Uh, for both Empower and NWA 73, neither one of these is a show that you can afford to miss if you're a fan of uh, the NWA or just good professional wrestling. Um, there's going to be uh, a, a lot that you're going to want to know in the moment. You don't want to be hearing about it on Twitter. You don't want to be seeing uh, pictures from us of, of what we're getting to experience. You want to be able to watch it live as it happens. So head on over to Fight TV and uh, make sure you go ahead and order that um, and, and be a part of it. The first time in 30 yeah. years they're going to be at the chase. This is history. The whole That's right. weekend is history. One of the most historic, uh, uh, you know, NWA locations. This is right up there with the GPB studio. This is right up there with the uh, the President Hotel in Waterloo, Iowa. This is one of the great locations. This is right up there with a the sportatorium in Dallas, Texas, world-class championship wrestling. This is one of the great iconic wrestling locations. Maybe I might even argue Perhaps the greatest, if you uh, you know, if you tie in the legacy of the great Sam Muchnick and 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 his impact uh, as the leader of the National Wrestling Alliance for so many years. Um, if you if you can't get there, look, guys, tickets are going fast. There's only a handful of tickets left for seventy three. There's there's just a, a you know a few left for NWA and Power, but you've also got tapings uh, for the couple of days after that. Going there, you know, if you can't if you can't get to 
uh, Empower or 73, but you can get to the tapings, do so. We'll be there. We, we, uh, we've got several um, individuals in the chat who see us there. We will interact with you. We'll come talk to you, hang out with you, whatever. Um, you don't want to miss this event, but, but, you know, if you have to, if you have to order on pay-per-view, that's legitimate. Also, we understand not everybody can get out there. Let's sell this joker out. Let's set records on, on pay-per-view buy rates for fight TV. Let's make this a historic moment. Let's, 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 let's show the NWA that we appreciate them going to the links to put on, uh, this historic spectacle for us so that we get more and more and more of them. I, I am with Doc there 100%. We may argue sometimes, but what if you if you like the National Wrestling Alliance, if this is your kind of wrestling, you know it is ours. Uh, this, is, this is the wrestling we love. And you want to see more of it? You want to see the NWA grow, expand, come to your city later on down the line? All of these things, the way you make that known is this week in August, August 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, you got to show up and show out either there or on pay-per-view. And it shows the world that the NWA is back. It's legit. And there's no stopping it. Now you want to see it, make it onto some other television channel or wherever. When you sell this thing out and you break records on pay-per-view that shows the world that there's a demand for classic old school prize fight wrestling. And that's, that's what you want to see. This is how you show the world that's what you need. And every I promise you, you 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 put your money where your mouth is. We love you guys. I mean, we get it. Everybody's working hard. I guarantee you, we've spoken to a lot of them. Every one of these guys and girls are going to be there ready to bust their ass to give you the show of a lifetime. They're ready to go in there and have the best matches in the world. They want to compete. They want to be on the biggest stage possible. And so that's the goal with this weekend. It's exciting. I, I get goosebumps every time I think about it. I am I am so grateful that I get to be a part of this and, and to see it happen right in front of my face. And uh, we can't wait to see what you guys think because I think I think you're going to be impressed. And, and slowly, news is even rolling out. This is all ahead of even knowing what the matches are even. Uh, but you're going to be hearing about that real soon, all throughout this month. You'll start hearing the names and the uh, announcements, and and I guarantee you this ain't just a big deal in the NWA. This ain't just a big deal in our little community. People are coming from all over, uh, different promotions, different locations, just everywhere that they can get to the chase, they're going to be there. Who's who in professional wrestling? They want to be a part of this. So uh, get ready. It's going to be exciting. We can't wait to see you there. Uh, anything else you guys wanted to add before we uh, wrap this thing up? No, just to, oh. you know, just to, to echo what Certified Hustler said in the chat, man, the chase is the mecca of pro wrestling. If you can be there, don't miss it, guys. Be there. Come join us. If you can't, buy that pay-per-view, guys. We got to have Ultimate Pusher Tyreek's going to be there. He's in the chat. I don't know how he ever gets there, but he's always there. You'll find the Ultimate Pusher. You'll find... Uh, You'll find Front Row. He's going to be visiting St. Louis that week. Oh, man. Certified Hustler, I see you in the chat. You're going to be there. Terry McDermott, I know you want to be there, but you had to uh, buy it on pay-per-view. We're grateful for that, man. That's that's a big deal. Dr. Red, I see you in the chat. Uh, Eric, Nathan, Roided Caps, James Lawrence, all of you. Uh, anybody I miss? Nani, thank you so much for being here in this chat with us at least. And I promise you, we'll keep these going all the way up until that weekend and beyond. So we appreciate this community where we get to talk about our favorite professional wrestling, the national wrestling Alliance and NWA power. And uh, you see all of our tags there. If you want to hit us up on any of the socials, anytime we're free, we're available. And uh, also at TIPW show, youtube.com slash this is pro wrestling. We'd love it. If you took a second out of your day and went and subscribed over there, that would mean the world to us. And uh, anyway, that's it for now. There's a lot of news coming out this week regarding NWA power and empower and 73. So stay tuned to the socials. I promise you're going to see it. We'll probably be seeing you again sooner than you think. We love you guys. And until next week, 